Ja Rastafari and definitely a good song to Selassie I, right? <laughs> I and I. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm getting there gradually. <laughs> but um, well, a very great song to start off this segment. Good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for staying with us as well. This is TV3 New Day and it's time now for the big issue. We're going to be discussing two very important topics. I already gave you an idea what those topics were, but if you just tuned in, don't worry, we're going to go into it again. So on Monday, the president cut sword for the reconstruction of the Accra Tema motorway, uh, which is a very good thing for every Ghanaian at this point who's been plying that route because for the longest time we've been complaining about the potholes and literally manholes on that stretch and you know you, you use that stretch and sometimes you're not even sure if you're going to be able to make it back home safely especially at night and just a few days ago we did a whole story on how there are barely street lights on that entire stretch and so we're happy that finally the sword has been cut even though for the minority they think that this is coming a little too late they're asking questions as to why the president has waited till three months to the elections to cut sword for the reconstruction of the Accra Tema motorway. There are also some figures that have been churned out by the finance minister with regards to how much money has been allocated for the reconstruction. And minority is also challenging that based on what they say parliament approved um, before the reconstruction. So we'll get into that. And also a group has petitioned the office of the special prosecutor to probe the 245 million US dollars that we're told was spent on the All Africa Games. A lot of eyebrows have been raised about how much has been spent on on feeding, on the refurbishment of some hostels on campus. Uh, many people are saying that that should have even been able to put up a number of new hostels um, for the institution, knowing very well that we're already struggling with lack of accommodation for tertiary students at the University of Ghana. And so they're wondering why about 16 million US dollars was used to refurbish some of these structures. And for students who have gone back to these structures, they have been wondering if there was any proper renovation at all because a number of things are not working. The ACs that were installed per the last time that we visited and did the story, they had been disconnected. So really, what's the challenge? And this group wants the Office of the Special Prosecutor to look into that, to look into how much was given to GBC, how much was spent on feeding, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll discuss all of that on the show this morning. I have Elikem Kotoko. He's the Deputy National Organizer for the NDC. Good morning. Good morning. How are you brother. doing? Uh, could be better. You could be better. Yeah. What's wrong, traffic? Well, waking up to news of uh, <laughs> the continuous news about uh, corruption here and there cannot be something that a young person of my kind mm. should be happy about. I think I'm a young guy. I'm seeing gray hair here. Yeah, uh, I'm 40. Uh, I'm still young. Okay. I'm mean, just, I mean, You're even just above. You're a young adult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I find it very worrying uh, looking at the fact that we find ourselves in an economic mess and the average Ghanaian out there. Mind you, 8.5 million of Ghanaians have been pushed to extreme poverty levels. Mm. No, 850,000, I think. 8.5. It's 8.5? Okay. And what this tells you is that probably we do not even have the middle class anymore. Mm. Everybody has been downgraded. You are either up there or down there. Then you hear that um, the school feeding is facing challenges. Mm. How much are we feeding them? Then 15 million mm. is spent to feed um, uh, some uh, sportsmen over just some 15 days. Mm. Then 4.5 million is spent on on accreditation, and and all of these. It appears that the people aren't angry enough or are so tolerant, mm. and therefore uh, the governors are want to just take us for granted. And and this is a ticking time bomb that we need to be very careful about. Mm. It doesn't matter of party coloration. What is wrong is wrong, especially as young men. Yeah. We should be bold enough. If indeed it is bold solutions you want to offer, then you must be bold enough to confront the, the, the challenges and, and tell us the truth rather than the lies that have bedeviled All right. uh, the system. Well, well, I just wanted to cross-check the number. So it's 850,000 Ghanaians 850. who were pushed into poverty. That's, that's still um, bad. Yes, not so even it's not 8.5. Um, but yes, thank you so much for, for your introduction. But let me also welcome Enoch Afokwa. Um, Esquire, he's a, oh, yeah. not yet. You oh, have yes, been, yes. yes. Eh, so let me address you properly. He's a member <laughs> of the NPP communications team. He started intimidating <laughs> yes. us. Eh? <laughs> eh, this black and white that he's wearing early morning like this guy, where everyone's wondering. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing well. You've yeah. been MIA, but mm -hmm. it's good to have you back. Yeah, yeah. How's it been? You're looking since? good. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, been, it's been okay. Okay. Um, like Dr. Bamud Baumia said, that um, to lead is to solve. Mm. And certainly, the government of the New Patriotic Party, led by His Excellency Nana Dankwe Okufuado, is solving the, the problems of our country. And he's leaving a lasting legacy where he will be remembered 
mm. history will be kind to Nana Danko Kufuado. That people will remember Nana Danko Kufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumian's administration as the administration that really gave Ghana the level of infrastructure that we need as a country. In terms of sports infrastructure, mm. um, President Kufuado has given us sports independence. In terms of health, he's on course giving us health independence. In terms of road, I'm, I'm in terms of road, you okay. understand it when we okay. go into the substantives. In I terms of road see. infrastructure, he's giving Ghana independence as far as uh, the road infrastructure of our country is concerned. Uh, uh, and mm. various sectors, education, he's not a king of education as far as uh, education investments are concerned. So certainly, we are on court as a country, though, although we have challenges as a okay. country, but the challenges are not over us. Government is putting in mechanisms and measures mm. to solve and give the Ghanaians the benefit that we deserve as a people. Okay. And certainly, um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, in all humility, will ride upon these achievements and will, will come in with the bold solutions to be able to push Ghana into the fourth industrial revolution. I, are you sure you're talking to Ghanaians? Because I'm talking to Ghanaians. I am a Ghanaian. They're giving independence, Ghanian. road independence. Absolutely. All that. In terms of performance. You, you hold on. Let yeah, me in terms of performance. Our third, our third guess, because, I mean, as you were mentioning so, all those things, you realize I was squinting, right? Absolutely. Because if you look at the figures, 850,000 people who have been pushing to poverty. Certainly. I mean, 1.9 million young people are untrained, uneducated, uh, unemployed as well. And you're wondering, if you look at even... Um, you know, the CD to dollar ratio at this point, which is 16 Bella, um, CDs, all those things. No, you don't worry, it's intro. I'm just also it's just... Intro. Yes, this is intro. Don't, don't worry, I'll come to you. Don't worry, I'll come to you. But I'm just saying that I was message. squinting because if I think of all the figures <laughs> and where we are now, you're saying that, you know, history will be kind <laughs> to the president. Very kind. I mean, not, not just kind, I respect your opinion. Very kind all right. to I respect your opinion. Yes, yes, lawyer. We hear you. Before you come and sue me. All right, Solomon Owusu is also here. He's a senior communicator for Movement for change. Good morning. Good morning. Bella. How are you doing? Uh, by his grace, mm. uh, if I listen to these two political parties, after 32 years of mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy, unemployment at 14.74%, inflation at 20.9%, 33.3% falling in the multidimensional poverty threshold, our mothers, our fathers who fought for this country worked diligently, having been given haircuts, Poverty rife everywhere, who caps the order of the day. And we have been told this. It will only be, it will only be fair mm. that the Ghanaian disassociate itself from these two political parties going into election 2024. What is hookup, by the way? Which one are you referring to? Young ladies at the universities, at the tertiary institutions, are having to survive uh, through hookups. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a major challenge. Well, it's not just the young women. In fact, we're told the young men are also engaged. Ah, absolutely. I mean, uh, so it's, it's a serious matter. We are being confronted with hunger as mm. we speak. The nation risks facing hunger. And that is our uh, electoral or examination scorecard. So if this, is very, it, if this is something that is good and posterity will judge this as right, then so be it. But I believe that posterity... Or history will not be kind to any leader who has dug a big hole at 58 million dollars that we are having to fill and 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 if this is what posterity will judge us right then that posterity must be questioned mm. and so we from the movement for change believe that it's time for Ghanaians to rethink the way we have been voting we are part of the problem we cannot run away from it mm. because we put leaders there so if leaders are mismanaging the economy means mismanaging the country that means we did not think right and that is why, having been served with bad leadership for 32 years, 32 years by the 7th of December 2024, the Ghanaian will change its ways. All right. Well, thank you so much. And um, rather lengthy introductions to today, but yes, that sets the pace for today's conversation. And let me just remind you to play cash out, star 439 hash, select option two, and play as many times as possible. You stand the chance of winning 1,000 Ghana cities this morning before the show ends. Uh, remember, you have to be a Telesel subscriber or an MTN subscriber. Play play and play more. Good morning to all our viewers on social media. In fact, we're streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana. I'd like to say good morning to Mike Fire and to also Mensa Azanglo. And uh, he says, hmm, Lami Zanza. We haven't even started a conversation. We're already saying, hmm, what's going on? <laughs> Lami Zanza too says, good morning to you all and blessings and protections. Amen. Thank you. Um, Awal is asking, who is that man? I have three men on the show. So which of them are you asking about? Uh, someone says, Master, keep quiet. Hey, Christina, easy. 
Easy, Christina. It's too early. Uh, bold forwards, Golo Florence. Nelson, good morning to you as well. Uh, Benjamin Kofi Hakma. He says, Bella, please allow him to say what he wants. December 7 is coming. I guess that yes, you also um, vote based on that. Okay, with Solo in the studio, um, I bet the sh Oh, no, don't say that, Hassan. It will end peacefully. Solo is a peaceful man. <laughs> oh. it's a, he's a very peaceful man, and so... Oh. I don't want to go into that, but <laughs> let, let, let's get into our conversation now. And so this Monday, the president officially cut sword for the expansion of the deplorable 19-kilometer Tema motorway. And this has been received very well, of course, by citizens who have been calling on all governments to do something about the motorway. So it was held, it marks the beginning of a significant infrastructure project aimed at improving transportation and boosting economic activities within the greater Accra region. Now, the thing is that, in fact, the motorway was inaugurated way back in 1965. It was to facilitate movements for goods and people. And at that time, it was designed for about 45,000 vehicles. It was supposed to last 50 years. We've gone beyond that 50 years, and we've not seen any major reconstruction. I know there have been some refurbishments here and there. In fact, in 2009, there were some 500,000 Ghana cities that were supposed to have been used for refurbishment as well. Um, that came with its own issues. But we're finally at that point where sword has been cut, and we're told that it's going to cost us about 339 million U.S. dollars. However, the finance minister, when he was speaking, also gave another figure. So let's listen to the president first. We'll hear from the finance minister, and I'll tell you why the minority is raising eyebrows over that figure that he mentioned. Particularly pleased to note that the contractor for the first phase of this project is Messrs. Maripoma Enterprise Limited, a wholly owned Ghanaian company. <laughs> this is a testament to the cap capacity, capability and ingenuity of our domestic enterprises. And I'm confident that they will deliver this project to the highest standards. It is a source of great, of great pride, the re reconstruction and expansion of the Accra Tamil motorway is taking place during my tenure as president. This project is proof of my government's commitment to building a Ghana that is modern, prosperous, and connected. I urge the ministers of roads and highways and finance to continue working diligently to ensure that this project is and the time has come to renew and expand this motorway to meet the needs of a modern and rapidly developing Ghana. The total cost of the entire project scope of work is 660 million US dollars with the first section alone requiring 380 million US dollars. Through the strategic leadership of our government and the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, we have secured 380 million US dollars in equity and viability gap funding. Moreover, by relying on a PPP approach, we can invite financial institutions, and a wide range of investors to further contribute to financing our nation's future. All right, so you've heard from the finance minister, Honorable uh, Amin Andam, and of course the president as well. And the minister says that it's going to cost us about 660 million US dollars to complete all three sections of the road construction. In fact, section one will be the Accra to Temamuto we ran about um, to Tetequashi interchange. And then section two will be Tetequashi interchange to a Penkwa interchange. And section three will be a Penkwa to the new plan junction. So that's the plan. But for now, they've cut sword for the construction of just one section, which is from um, the, is on the Tema motorway. So from Accra to the Tema motorway uh, runabouts. And so that's basically it. Now, the minority is challenging the figure that the um, finance minister has put out. And I'm wondering why. Well, good thing is that Elikem is here and he'll tell us why. Elikem, what is the problem? What's wrong with what the finance minister said? Thank you so much, uh, Bella. Uh, let me wish uh, Obi and Sarah a happy birthday. Oh, it's his birthday today. Yes. Okay. Uh, and Bella, it's, it's very worrying uh, the rate at which things seem to be deteriorating. And yesterday was no different. 
And as you heard, Parliament is very aware that if you have to go through the records and the handsets, uh, this whole project started as far back as 2019 when government talked about the need for them to do a PPP to mm. uh, expand or work on the motorway because it had outlived its lifespan. And then there was a time in 2020 or so when they were reconsidering the design and build mm. uh, contract, amongst other things. Now, President Akufuado, with just some few months to bow out of power, seemed to be on a certain mission, either to dupe the Ghanaians further or perpetrate oh. why, evil. Why would you say that? Because if in Parliament, and the records show that you have gone through these, and parliamentary approval that has been given mm -hmm. is $339 million. Is it for the entire project, or because you heard the minister, he says yes. for Section 1. Yes, sir. So where from the session two and three, which probably was not given approval, why must it be now be, be put in various sessions in order to give somebody the leeway to find an avenue to not extort, but engage in what we will call criminality? Because, you see, you cannot decide to be doing things on your own as though Ghana was your own property. And you, if, if you look at what they were saying, for instance, from the... Uh, interchange mm -hmm. to uh, up inquiry, mm -hmm. the, the Fiesta Royal, etc. What else needs to be done when that uh, enclave is almost it's five or six lanes already? So are they just going to make an asphalt overlay and come and tell us that alone is over 100 million? This is what has happened to us, and we have spent 58 million dollars in digging a hole because a president had a dream, nobody was there with him to build for God a cathedral, which he has even failed at. And he's very proud to scam God. That is almost 17.1% of the 300 and something million that they said they have secured in equity financing. And so I do not understand why this government or the regime thinks that they can do things without recourse to the due processes. If parliament has given you approval for 339, if there is need for any changes, don't forget that is another albatross hanging on the neck of even the vice president. Why? In the case of the PDS scandal, where the vice president who chaired the meeting was there and overlooked things and ensured that certain conditions in the agreement were changed. And this was what resulted in the scam of the PDS. We lost over $190 million by reason of that misconduct by why, the city vice president. Why are we linking president. this to the vice president? Because it is money we are dissipating. This is public funds. And don't forget that in my beginning, my, my, my initial statement, I made you know, and you actually correct me, 800 and close to 1 million Ghanaians mm -hmm. have been pushed down to extreme poverty levels. The very people who we used to classify as middle class, etc., are no longer there. They are now in the, down there, and they are struggling. So why would you think that there has been a change in scope of work? And therefore, let us now say that, oh, uh, we have phase one, phase two, phase three, or session one, session two, and three. So session one alone costs 300 and something million. And so they, then they will come out to say, oh, then this is unaware. It's because they are, they are limited in thinking, because we are only talking of uh, the, the motorway which costs that amount. What about the two and three? Why hasn't it also been added to what needed to go through parliament so that parliament will look carefully at all of this? If not for criminality, what else would there be? And I am now giving the room to doubt your fairness, your objectivity in the discharge of duties. Because if you think you want to do things right, then you need to go through due process for everyone to be very abreast and, 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 and content with what is happening. But you can now take your own will to decide that, okay, this part maybe I'm taking through Parliament. After it's been given approval for 339, let's add a phase two and phase three. And that is also... 100% of the amount that has been given approval to. So to the best of Parliament, what they have approved is 339. Now, what I want to find out, and I know you're not in Parliament, but I don't yes. know if you've had conversations, because the person who raised concerns about this is Honorable Governor Agboja, mm -hmm. and he's government spokesperson, or he's the minority spokesperson mm -hmm. on, inf on yeah. infrastructure, right? Yeah. So right. he said that Parliament, and I quote, Parliament only approved 339 million US dollars multi-year funding for the project. We did not approve 660 million 
no one has the right to commit the country to further or to future spending on the projects without approval from Parliament. What I want to know is this 339 million, as of the time it was approved on the floor of Parliament, was it for the three sections I, or for just one? I, I want to believe that it is even for the three sessions. Because once they have actually brought this to Parliament, definitely it will not be out of the scope that has been defined to Parliament. It is a reason why it is of worry to everyone that if there has been any change for whatsoever, and you see, Bella, for some time now, interestingly, we even quote these projects in dollar terms. Mm. And so if in dollar terms and the city is even depreciating, why would you want to make us believe that when the, the city is depreciating, it is affecting the dollar as well? It shouldn't be. Because there cannot be any justification for a program that is worth $100. For you to now tell me if the dollar to the city was, let's say, uh, $1 to six cities, and it has moved from $1 to 12 cities, it is still the same dollar. So what is the justification? Maybe we would have to hear from them what has necessitated the need for this figure to balloon by over 100% of what was approved by Parliament. Okay. L let me ask Council, because you would have to respond to this. Why are we hearing $660 million um, during the sword cutting ceremony when Parliament says that they only approved 339? Uh, Bella, let me say a very good morning to yourself and to my uh, co-panel panelists on your show and extend the greetings of His Excellency, the Vice President, who is also the incoming President of the Republic of Ghana, inshallah, Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia, to your cherished viewers as well. Uh, Bella, I am clearly awashed by the choice of words of my brother, Elikem. I've not known him on that tangent, but probably he is only struggling to uh, satisfy the interests of um, his political divide Which word exactly? by describing the President at the actions of the president as, uh, as criminal, that the, that the president is going to do uh, Ghanaians further, as if the president has duped, it's an established fact that the president has duped the people of this country. 58 million dug a hole. Elikem, you let him make his point. <laughs> let him make his point. So your point being? That the president has duped the people of this republic in the past, and he set to do the same again. Uh, that is... Uh, 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 not to be accepted on this platform. In fact, the president has performed creditably in all manner, in, in all terms, and has been transparent and accountable to the people of this country. He has not been cited in any fraudulent or criminal conduct as far as his service and stewardship mm. to the republic is concerned. Has he been accountable, though? Very accountable. In what way? Oh, his budgets have been through parliament. All his activities have been sanctioned through executive authority and... Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> through Parliament, the approvals of Parliament and parliamentary scrutiny, where in, 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 in the Auditor General, General's reports or in the CID's records has the press been indicted of any criminal uh, or any wrongdoing or criminality. Mm. Bella, we should be careful when we sit on national platforms of this nature and begin to speak and impugn motive against some individuals mm. just to cause injury to the reputation of these individuals it's not something that we must entertain. I mean, if you're talking about accountability, there are various forms. But when is the president going to avail himself even to the media so we can have a conversation with him about it's, some of the decisions he has taken as president? Oh, I heard in the past that His Excellency, the vice president, can never organize a press worry to meet the press. But I was happy to see you there and no, ask the question. I'm asking about the president, not the vice president. Certainly. So once a challenge was thrown that His Excellency, the vice president, could never... Mm -hmm. interact with the press as was done by the perpetual flag bearer and leader of the National Democratic Congress, Mr. John Ramani Mahama. He proved all, all, all of us wrong. But we didn't get the answers that we required because he said that for lots of the things that we're asking for, he was not the one whose name the budget was sent to Parliament um, in. It was actually the President's name in which the budget was sent to Parliament. And so for what, a lot of was, economic was, decisions... No, was he right or wrong? Well, so that's why I'm asking that. No, was so he right when or is wrong? the President... His and answer, and not his to digress, answer, but when no, is the no, President not also going to But his answer was premised on for Article 57 of our Constitution and Article 78 of our Constitution that grants executive authority to the President of the Republic. Mm. And some, the, the President is also the chair, the chairman or chairperson of Cabinet. Dr. Baumia has never chaired Cabinet meetings before. He has never exercised any executive authority in this country before. He has never sent any budget to Parliament on, in his name before as President of the Republic. Okay. So if he says that, 
it is not in his name. He was right in all in all certainty to have made that allusion you to the public. Let's just say he was right. Yeah, he was right. He says that, that but <laughs> all those budgets were sent in the name of the president. Absolutely. When are we going to get to question the president on the various decisions that he's taken concerning Ghanaians and their livelihoods? Because you are talking about the president being accountable. How has he been accountable to the people that through, voted him into through, office? Through Parliament. That's the people's representative. Through Parliament. Where in this republic has the president breached his responsibility of going before the House of Parliament to administer the state of the nation address, which is a constitutional requirement Can I to the people of this no, no, country? No, hold on, please. Let him, mm -hmm. let him when, answer. For his seven-year reign as president, has he ever breached that responsibility of accounting to the people of Ghana through the state of the nation address? Bella, he has never breached that sacred duty, sacred constitutional duty. Mm -hmm. So he has, he has ever been accountable to the good people of our country. Except to say that he has not met the press to interact with you, as has been done by the vice president mm. uh, 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 two, or th two or three days ago. But certainly I know that the president, as he has been accountable and has been open and run an open and accountable governance, will certainly do that and beat the media, the fourth estate of the realm, mm. before he finally bow out of office. Are you saying uh, that in, in, in the coming? You are not sure. Oh, yes. You are assuming I that know, he might. I know that, that the president the will certainly. Certainly meet the media okay. because he has been doing that in the past. You remember, you remember that in the first term of his governance, he met the media at the Jubilee House where even Country Mansungu and a couple of others were asking questions about Akwesia Pierre's appointment and reappointment and the whole lot of things. So this is not the first time that the president has ever interacted with the media. And he will continue to do that. And that is not the only forum of accounting to the good people of this oh, country. I understand. There are several Which tools. is why I so ask you that. that. If all those other ones may have been met, what Absolutely. about accounting directly to the so, people? But you let's so get certainly, back to, to certainly the conversation. Certainly, it's an ongoing. You remember okay. the fellow Ghanaian mantra. It's also an interaction with the media. Okay, carry on. <laughs> so certainly... Um, with regards to the, uh, the 20 seats, um, August groundbreaking for the reconstruction and redevelopment of the Accra Tema Motorway and a segment of um, some major highways in Accra, the president made some admissions that dates a significant project. You know, the lifespan of the motorway was to, on in 1965, when the motorway was constructed and was handed over, was to last for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Although it has seen some significant maintenance uh, throughout its life, uh, the, its lifespan, was supposed to have been lapsed by 50 years. But this is, this is the time that the motorway is now 59 years from 1965 to 2024. It is almost, uh, 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 it is almost 60 years now since it was constructed to serve its purpose. And certainly something needs to be done about this motorway. Mm -hmm. And like my brother rightly said, the whole, the whole process to reconstruct the motorway or to redevelop the motorway into a major, a, a major express highway started in 2019, where there has been ups and downs as far as the reconstruction and the redevelopment were concerned. And all these matters as far as the finances of the state were concerned. So government was looking at in, uh, a creative and uh, um, in, uh, using in, uh, genuine creative measures to be able to secure funding to support and construct this pro uh, uh, project for the benefit of the people of this country. Lo and behold, in 2020, an act of parliament was promulgated. And this act of parliament is called the Public-Private Partnership Act of 2020, Act 1039, uh, which has clear uh, 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 covenants, mm -hmm. clear legal provisions as far as entangling the state in a public-private partnership mantra is concerned. And under Shadow 1 of the PPP Act, Shadow 1 gives clearly the status or the amount of, uh, the value of projects and the, the, the approving authorities as far as those projects are concerned. And under project, projects where it, uh, the state is required to go before parliament under Article 174 and 181 of our constitution, you know that Article 174 clearly talks about tax, a taxation whether you are introducing a tax measure mm -hmm. or you are giving a tax waiver or partially or that, or in that regard. If that concerns the project, then you must certainly go before parliament to seek parliamentary approval. Okay. And secondly, under Article 181, when the project, uh, uh, you'll be going for a loan to be able to pursue this project, then certainly you must also go to seek parliamentary ratification of this project before parliament. Quite apart from this, then you must also explore other options. Cabinet has the power to also approve projects which, uh, whose value mm -hmm. in CD equivalent is almost above 200 million US dollars. That is the threshold of cabinet approval. And below that, uh, when you go to other sectors, uh, the other sectors also have 
the various ones, the digital assemblies, digital assemblies have a, a $1 million a, a CD equivalent threshold. Mm -hmm. Municipal assemblies have some $2 million, and metropolitan assemblies have some $5 million US dollar threshold, where the general assemblies of the various assemblies will have to approve of that, those projects before those projects, uh, the, you can bond the state or the assemblies into a public-private partnership in that regard. Okay. So certainly, as far as approvals, because this is clearly a public-private partnership arrangement, and the threshold within which uh, this project scope light is above two hundred million dollars. Certainly, cabinet has the power to to approve of this project. Okay, we are coming to the substantive matter of why um, Mr. Abuja is saying what he said. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Abuja clearly stating that Parliament approved is it three hundred and thirty nine three hundred thirty nine yes, 339, yes. 30, 39 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. Because of government of Ghana's equity, as far as this private, public-private partnership is concerned, and using uh, leveraging on the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, the GIF funds, to be able to support it, the government of Ghana's equity into this project is the said amount of money that Parliament of Ghana approved. Mm -hmm. And government is also leveraging on the private sector because the scope of this project is so broad, and the total project cost is the 660 million US dollars, as mentioned by the minister the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. who is the head of the Treasury of our Republic, clearly mentions that the general scope, the totality of the amount of money that will be required to be able to undertake this project. And mind you, it is not only the 19.5 uh, kilometers of stretch from the uh, Tebamoto Way yeah. runabout or the Tebamoto Way interchange to the uh, Tetequashi interchange stretch. It stretches from Tetequashi interchange, like that is the, the phase mm -hmm. one. The phase two also stretches from the Tequashi interchange to the Apenkwa mm -hmm. uh, flyover, then from Apenkwa to the new, new plan, plan, the new plan junction mm -hmm. around the Atimota uh, road. Uh, there, there will be interchanges and re development and re -mod uh, modernization of the various okay. interchange projects. Which is what Elikem was asking us. What is wrong with those roads that we even need to redo? When you look at from Tetequashi interchange to Apenkwa and Apenkwa to New Plan, he was asking that what is wrong with those roads? Because as far as he's concerned, th those roads are fine. What is there to fix? You see? These are, these are some of the things that we say that we need not to let our roads deteriorate. This is, this, is, this is a road project that is coming. You know, a 10-lane ten, a ten, uh, ten major express highway is coming. Mm -hmm. And the inflow of the traffic into this narrow, the narrow stretch mm -hmm. means that there will be traffic build up at the, at the, at, at the exit point of the major inflow. So okay. certainly you need to open the mouth of the, the inflow so that it will contain the volumes of traffic that is coming. Okay, so I, it's five lanes to Tema and five lanes, five lanes back? Five yes. Is that what has been agreed Yes, that's the 10-lane okay. express highway. Okay. Ten, uh, five, five. Okay. 10-lane ten, ten express mm. highway. And coming to enter. And you see, even from Tetequashi Interjet, meaning that the whole interchange, Tetequashi Interjet, will need further redevelopment of the interchange to be able to contain, because mm. the current design will not suffice as far as this 10-lane coming in is concerned. Because currently, what flows into the Tetequashi Interchange is just... Uh, is it four, four, lane, uh, four lanes? Mm. You've got two here, two here, yeah. four lanes. So essentially, once you are adding six lanes to it, the, the other auxiliary roads that is linking the Tetequashi interchange will also need to be opened up, extended further, and all, all the rates, okay. which will also cost money. When you come to the Liberation Road here, mm -hmm. the Polo, Polo Junction there, there will be, I think there will be, there's going to be also another flyover around that side because mm -hmm. of the traffic, the, the traffic flow into that seg segment of the road. There will be flyovers on the various end, uh, how do you call it, uh, foot bridges, on, on this stretch is because of how wide these uh, 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 highways are going to be concerned. And look at the volume of investment that will go into this, uh, this matter. It is one that is going to consider the economic performance or the economic inclusion of our country, environmental inclusion, and social performance inclusions as far as these developments are concerned. Mm. And certainly, if Parliament is contesting these figures, clearly because it's a PPP arrangement and it's not a directly government of Ghana-funded project, Cabinet has the, the, the power to approve of this project. That is why probably they did not have the opportunity of going through the entire a project scope and those kind of things. Okay. But once they have been able to approve of the equity that government of Ghana is supporting this entire project with, and because it is a multi-year contract, because this PPP arrangement parliament approved is for 30 good years. Mm. 30 good years for um, the consortium. 30 years? 30 years. Okay. Between okay. the government of Ghana and uh, the TA. Uh, Express Limited, mm. which which is a subsidiary of the mineral, in, uh, is it, uh, sorry, yeah. the, the Ga Ghana Infrastructure, Infrastructure Investment, Investment Fund. Fund. It's, yes. a, it's, a, it's a wholly owned subsidiary of mm -hmm. that. Together with the other partners that is coming on board, we'll be managing and we'll be tolling this uh, stretch of roads or these okay. highways for 30 good years to be able to recoup their investment, the liability that they incurred, and the return on equity as far as their contributions into this uh, ladder project is concerned. Okay. So certainly, 
It is not that government has aired legally or procedurally parliament approved of a sum of money. That government is going beyond what or usurping the powers of parliament in doing what parliament has not uh, undertaken. Okay. Parliament has directed government to do. But clearly, government is going on the basis of law and has not breached any distinct of legal provisions and procedure as far as this transaction is concerned. Okay. It is clearly transparent. It is clearly an accountable project. Where lies the benefit of this project? It will not only serve the interest of Ghana, but will serve the interest of Ghana and the sub-region, ECOWAS sub-region as, as, as a see. whole. Because right. it is serving as a Please health region and the, the other, other ECOWAS sub-region because it's an ECOWAS highway. From Aflao to Ghana, Nigeria, Benin, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and those kind of things. Once we are using Ghana as a transit point and doing a business because Ghana is the, the capital of African Please land for me, please. Certainly. All right. Uh, we all have to benefit from this we'll, we'll project. We'll come to the issue about... Government at the back. We'll come to the issue about why it's taking this long for you to sign this uh, or to cut short for this. I mean, shouldn't this have, have been done earlier? But let me come to Solomon. I mean, per the explanation that he's given, do you agree with Governor Sagboja about this figure or do you think his explanation suffices? Uh, let me say that uh, I find it difficult understanding my brother Afwakwa and mm. I, I don't know why he has to sweat on this. I'm not sweating so long. Uh, I, I don't know why he has to. Uh, <laughs> 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 you see, uh, the truth of the matter is that Parliament approved 338.8 million, which is mm -hmm. almost 339 million dollars, as far back as 20, 2023, mm -hmm. on the 15th of December. Mm -hmm. And government, uh, Parliament could not have approved partial payment. You understand? Yeah. We are going to undertake a major project. And we have known the entire the scope of the project at all material times since 2018. Remember this project started, uh, a Mortar Angel, that Portuguese yeah. South African company was originally going to do it. And here let me commend uh, Kwame Abuja, my former vice, Hall, vice president, for mm -hmm. speaking loudly about it, that we had Ghanaians who could uh, undertake this project. So finally, government settled on... Uh, and then Mary Puma or so, yes. which is a holy guy. And it's yeah. a good thing. I also commend government that uh, having listened to the, the minority, they decided to reverse the contract that they were going to give to foreigners uh, mm -hmm. to a Ghanaian wholly owned company. So at all material time, we had known that from motorway to Tetequashi was going to be 19.5%, from uh, Tetequashi to Apenkwa, 5.7%, mm -hmm. and from Tesano Junction or Apenkwa to New Plan. You mean kilometers? To, kilometers. Okay. 2.5%. Uh, and it was based on this. Kilometers. Kilometers. 2.5 <laughs> kilometers. Yeah. Based on this, that they costed it. Because you see, the design, if the Minister of Finance was telling me that the design has changed, you know, cost changes with design. Yeah. You have not told us that cost uh, design has changed. So, on what basis are you varying it? And even if you want to vary it, you must go back to say where the, uh, the end is tied. That's where you relieve it. Mm -hmm. You must go back to Parliament and then uh, uh, cause Parliament to pass or approve your variations. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we are told that it's going to cost 660 million. Along the line, I mean, when the, this contract was given to Mota Angel, I heard Jalula, the former existed the Deputy Minister of uh, Transport, say mm -hmm. that it was going to cost government 517 million yeah. dollars or so. Yeah. So even going by Jalula's position, what has happened between that time and this time that it has been inflated to 660? You see, what we are, we are being treated to is that this country, we take advantage of problems. You understand? We all know that the motorway is a problem. Mm -hmm. And the Ghanaian wants it to be fixed. And in doing so, we try to enrich our pockets. This is a, a clear case. No one can convince me. That they are trying to enrich them. Of course, it has been inflated. This this whole project has been inflated. But it is not only akin to those government. You remember in this country, during the NDC's time, a whole runway, runway 1,985, at Kumasi, we were having to spend 29 choppable million dollars. At the same time, the Ethiopian airport enterprise was constructed three runways. That was 2,500 meters, mm -hmm. more than ours. And they were spending $60 million for three, longer than ours. So that has been our bane. You remember in opposition, I'm, that's why I'm very surprised that my brother is sweating on it. We are all in the same party. Mm -hmm. We accused the NDC government whilst we were in opposition that they had inflicted, you know, the Kaswa Road? 
the way and manner you have to take this government on, uh, the NDC government on, for telling Ghanaians that they expended 174 million, was it euro or so? Mm. You remember the Dubai, what we said? And indeed, these uh, projects were inflated. From whichever angle you look at it. And that is why Alan Chamati has been saying that the issue of behavioral and mindset it needs to change. It needs to change. Huh? Because the mindset will cause you to be patriotic towards the country. Who is, who is taking care of this country? Who is taking care of this country? But Solomon, have you bothered to ask? Because that Mota Angel deal, mm -hmm. it was awarded in January 2021. Yes, yes. Between January 2021 and um, when, what, August 2024? Yes. If the price has moved from 570 to 660, could it not be because of inflationary, you know, factors and a lot of other things, the fact that prices have not remained the same, could that not be the reason why it may have gone up? First of all, this project has been priced in dollar. Mm -hmm. It's a dollar denominator. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if I'm going to go by your argument, what is the inflationary rate? It's a question I'm asking. Yes, it, it, the inflationary argument. rate will not be able to put the figure on the 660 million million they are talking about. Okay. Unless and until the minister comes back to clarify that there has been a variation in design, mm. which will lead to a variation in costing. So would you say that's the mistake he may have made, that he should have gone back to parliament? I don't think it's a mistake. Them... It's, it's something that they want to push through it. We are in this country that we have been told that we are going to expend $8 billion on dealing with a crisis pending. Mm. Nobody knows how they arrived at. I listened to the minister and it was pathetic. We are talking about Pualugu, a whole Pualugu dam. Mm. That was going to cost around $900 million. Yeah. To deal with a crisis, we are telling us we are going to expend $500 million which is not going to be a permanent resolution to the matter. So next year, we come back, and then we are faced with the same thing. You go and expend $500 million. So where are we going? So clearly, the minister needs to come back to us, get all the facts right, get us the detail, because at the end of the day, it is our tax revenue. It mm. is our tax money. You and I are going to pay for it. But I want to commend the government for also listening. Uh, to the strategies of Mr. Lanchamati Wang. It's again, if you go to a GTP, okay. now the Ghanaian is beginning You've to... You've covered the table, Mike, so... Yes, the Ghanaian mind. is beginning to... Oh, this guy, but better late than never anyway. Which, which advice did we they... We have been to? preaching since 2023, and he was even doing it whilst in government. What exactly? That government must adopt the PPP strategy. It oh. does not pay to always wait for tax revenue to embark on any infrastructure development. It doesn't work that way. At what point are you going to collect the much needed revenue to be able to fix all your roads, fix all your hospitals, invite the private sector into it? And now I'm happy that the government has seen the wisdom, though their initial response was that they were going to go into a loan agreement and give the contract to uh, Mota Angel. Now they have seen the need. I'm happy for that. I want to thank them for listening to Alan Chamatin, mm. though belated, if they are listening to him early on, we will not be finding ourselves where we are now. So we can proceed on that. On that tangent. So, so you've listened to him explain why he says that, you know, because of PPP, there was, you know, they had given uh, Parliament an update on how much they were going to spend. But beyond that, if the private partnership is coming in as well, then, of course, that's where the increase in figure comes in. I believe that's what you meant, right? Bella, I, okay. I don't see where there is justification that you are even going to <coughs> public-private partnership and you think that there shouldn't be full disclosure mm. to parliament on certain aspects of that agreement. I'm yet to even be fully aware of any very successful PPP this regime has gone into. And you see, if he is not aware, I would want to remind him again that his president, our president, who they wish to even compare to Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, promised us, told us in the face that they were building a cathedral on, and not a pesua of the taxpayer's money was going to be put in that. Mm. In the end, what happened? It was fully funded by the taxpayer. And we've dug a hole worth 58 million. And that's what I'm telling you, that if we are even stuck to the 339 million, the 58 million which they have spent by even importing a stone from Israel to come and bury there, making clowns of themselves through that exercise, 17.1%. Wouldn't have been here talking about even the PPP and all of that. We can raise the money. And interestingly, in the agreement, they are now talking of building tolls. You have decommissioned all the tolls in this country. Almost $10 million we're making monthly. You say you don't want them. 
You said as a result, you are introducing e-levy, and that will provide 11 million jobs. The finance minister, the former <coughs> finance minister, is working a free man after deceiving us all in that manner. You know, three months ago, or four or even five months ago, they cleared this motorway. It was cleared way ago. Only God knows how much was spent even in doing that. Mm. Two, three days ago, they had to clear it again. And this is a program that is supposed to last 36 months. We are looking at three years. On average, we know that that target will not be met. So it's about four years. And this is what you are telling us today. And you think that we should have believed. Look, I gave you an example of if you look at the, uh, the motorway end here, into the interchange to, to uh, Apenkwa. Mm -hmm. It is already about five or six lanes. In Five lanes in, I think it's three lanes. Then there's an outer lane of two. So it's about even six lanes already. Yes, there, still, there might still be a, a need for a change of scope of, of the design. Mm. Probably here from entering, which we feel that there's need for you when going to Tema from, uh, uh, um, from the airport and cliff mm -hmm. area. You need to just fly over and go and all that. But if that was the reason, why is Parliament not aware? Why has the figure ballooned? And that is why it, it is difficult for anybody to believe that all of a sudden, a project that is even dollar denominated already, not CD denominated, if it was yeah. 339 million cities you were talking of, or you were even talking of 700 million cities, and suddenly you said by conversion yeah. that would actually change to this amount. Mm -hmm. So this is just brought the thievery. And if I am giving you examples of other outstanding matters of the All African Games that we just finished, the hole that the president has dug there, that till date, not even his spouse has confirmed to us that while they were in his bedroom, he, she heard the president pray to God and promise God that if you make me win an election, I was going to build for you a cathedral, of which even for two terms, for eight years, he has been un unable to fulfill that. That should tell you such a character as has come. Mm. If you truly believe in God and fear him, you would not, you would not, you would not renege on that promise. That should be one of the priorities of all priorities. And that was what he even made us to understand. The cathedral was a priority of priority. And we we'll have to keep hammering on this to let you know that anybody who can deceive God does not value you and I in any ways. So I am finding it difficult to understand or comprehend why my brother thinks that we should understand that maybe scope of design, we understand if there's going to be 10 lanes, five lanes, entering into another point. That, the motorway is only, only two lanes anyway. So if there's five lanes, obviously. But at any point of construction, when there are five lanes or 50 lanes, they always join at another point. Mm -hmm. So that is not enough reason for me to be convinced that it is justification for the figures we are talking about. I see. And so they should come again. Okay, so, so Council, there are other questions that are being asked by Honorable Governor Saguja, and I'll just run through them so you can respond. So he talks about the source of funding for the project, which he says is not sustainable. He says the NPP is claiming the source of funds for the project is Mohammed's Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. The NPP said the same thing about how they were going to fund the so-called Agenda 111, housing projects, etc. No we all know the status of Agenda 111 and all today. They've collapsed the GIIF, Unlike the past when GIF backed projects that are self-financing and sustainable, such as Kotoka Airport Terminal, etc. Now, the NPP incompetently invested the funds in unproductive ventures like SkyTrain, like Pullman Hotel, etc. Then we go to the next question where he says, that in any case, why is the NPP not explaining why they cancelled the contract between the Roads Ministry and Mortar Angels <coughs> and why they paid $2.5 million US dollars towards that unwholesome contract? And finally, the government currently owes road contractors about 15 billion CDs for works completed and certified and in capital letters not paid for. In response to Honorable Govins Agoja, between January 2024 in June 2024, the Ministry of Finance have made payments of about 10 billion US dollars in the road sector. And the minister has assured us that an additional 7 billion Ghana cities, 7 billion Ghana cities mm -hmm. in payments will be made to contractors by the mm -hmm. end of this year. The, the 10 billion is 10 billion Ghana cities. Ghana cities, that's what mm -hmm. I said. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. sorry. Yes. Okay. 10 so billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. 10, sorry. If I said dollars, then I'm sorry about that. So it means it's 10 cities. billion Ghana cities. Okay. And we are going to make further payments of 7 billion Ghana cities in payments to contractors who, are, who have completed their works and have been uh, genuinely certified for their payments. When that is that assurance, coming? The minister has given assurance by, by the last quarter of this year. Clearly, we are getting there. He's mobilizing resources to be able to uh, make those payments. 
for this project, we, you, I think you did not even fully complete the statement of Mr. Govind Sabuja, mm. who said that why should government be undertaking this project at Three the tail end mm -hmm. to an election? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the question we are asking is that if you are going for an election, must everything stall in this country? If you are going for an election, must governance cease? Must everything stall? We believe that governance is a continuous process. But is it not a fair question to ask? The three months to elections, you are no, now you cutting salt for you the see, motorway. It, it, exposes, it exposes the mindset of the NDC as far as this project is concerned. How? The, one, the reason is that this same project was before parliament in 20, uh, uh, 2019. 20, okay. And 2020, 2020 thereof, it went before parliament. Mm -hmm. And this approval of parliament came in December 2023. Yeah. December 2023. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a project that was started in 2019, 2020, but for the back and forth, financing issues and there it's it stalled. Uh -huh. and, and, and Parliament has made approvals of the same project. And you are questioning. So, you are questioning the project. But if, if the project has commenced, whether it is even at the tail end of the government and the project, it's a legal project of which it has gone through the, the, the full rigors of the laws of our country as far as procurement and all the processes there is is concerned, why must we question it? Because it comes to satisfy the interest of the Ghanaian. Mind you, politicians are benefiting their livelihood at the expense of the citizenry because we are paying politicians to serve our interest. What the citizens desire or desire from politicians mm -hmm. is that we are, we, we, politicians be able to provide them with the municipal services that the citizens of our country deserve, i.e. roads, electricity, hospitals, good schools, and the likes. And that is what government is doing. Look at the STEM education, the STEM schools, the model smart schools that government is putting up. Look at the, the, the one tablet to students. Mm. Look at the agenda one district hospitals. Look at the completion of the Eurojet, the, the, the bot Eurojet project that was started by President Kufo. That was never completed under the NDC. But this, but for this government, it has been completed. L L L L L L so hold on. And a whole lot of these projects. S so I was it's trying to read design. on this. So you said it was approved in December 2023. Yes. Now I'm reading an article here, 4th January 2024. And mm. the, the topic, this is on Pulse.com. It said that reconstruction and expansion of 19 kilometer Tema motorway into 10 lane starts. This was as far back as January 2024. Yes. yes. When this was announced. Exactly. Why no. are we cutting sword in August when there's already an article that's saying that the work had already started? So what exactly had started when, in January? When, when the moment, no the moment, Hold on, sir. please, please don't conclude. You see, don't, don't expose yourself, Elikem, on, on there's no money. This is a PPP arrangement. Uh -huh. So it is not clearly under the ambience of the government of Ghana. Government of Ghana is funding through its equity of $380 billion, uh, 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 million. Mm -hmm. But the moment parliament approved of the concession, the agreement of this project, mm -hmm. then it, it is deemed to have commenced because once it has received ratification from parliament. And mind you, because of the uh, Section 33 of the Public Financial Management Act, the PFM Act, mm -hmm. Section 33 mandates that multi-year or multi-layer contract must come before parliament for approval. And this, because it's a multi-year con uh, contract, <coughs> it's going to last for 30 years, it must go before parliament. I have stated on your platform clearly, on the basis of law, that this is a public-private partnership arrangement under Act 1039, mm. the Public Procurement and uh, the Public-Private Partnership Act, where government of Ghana, through its equity, and sourcing the uh, participation of the private sector, it's undertaking this infrastructure development. And the contribution in equity of the government of Ghana through the, um, um, what, is, what is the, the, the infrastructure yeah, investment yeah, fund, Ghana okay, infrastructure okay, investment yeah. fund of 380 million uh, million US dollars is what government of Ghana is putting. So, into so this what program. I'm trying to say, so and why, the why is the article saying? Because it says precisely here that the construction, the reconstruction, and expansion of the motorway started on Tuesday, January 2, 2024. I said, is that wrong? I have stated here clearly. Or that was that the design part that has started. That once Parliament approved of the agreement, it is deemed to have commenced. So there's further need for mobilization and there is to get to site. And this is the time that the contractors are on site. Government has gone there to, uh, to, to break the ground for the, comment, the formal commencement of the program as far as the various approvals and the works around it is concerned. Okay. So certainly, if a pulse.com pulse was ahead of time, probably yet, because of the interest of what we desire to get good roads to run on, to get good municipal services to use as people of this country. That is why okay. they were excited Let, to Let's continue that with the rest. The so, so in terms commenced. of sustainability of funding. In terms of sustainability of funding, this is the innovative way of uh, um, um, running this project <clears throat> to get the, program, the project completed in time. Every, every student or every professional in project management will tell you that for every project, there must be a start and a, a closure. 
And what, what is required of you is the scope, the design, and the finances, the cost com component. Once the, all these material things are available, and but for, uh, I know that the planning process, they have incorporated all the, the, the risks mitigating measures that can impact upon this project into this. Mm. And they are telling us that this project will run for 36 months and will be handed over for use by the people of this country and all their rates. So certainly, in terms of sustainability, everything has gone into it. The minister told us that the $380 million that the government of Ghana is putting into this project, as far as the equity of the government of Ghana is concerned, is ready because we have already secured that amount of money. From and, the GIF. Yes. Okay. We, are, we have already secured that amount of money. And that we are looking at the private sector, what the private sector is also bringing in to be able to start the process, the, 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 the contract running. Were we and not told the same thing for Agenda 111? Agenda 111, is this told? Were we not told the same no, thing? No, Agenda 111, is this told? But, but even if averagely, we ask for updates. Averagely, averagely. An agenda one one project is almost around sixty five percent completion rate. Average, <laughs> you can, yes, all of them. Absolutely, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Averagely, because it's hundred and eleven hospitals, and if I'm telling you that averagely we have a completion rate of about sixty five percent, it tells you the state of the agenda one district hospital. And I'm telling you on this platform that in the next two months coming, uh -huh. you will see the commission of some of these agenda one district hospitals and handed over. Well, for we're expecting all of them to be commissioned before the end of the president's tenure because that's the promise he gave us. Whether all of them are completed or not, we will see. The commissioning and handing over for we use are going by the, the taxpayer of, the of this, uh, the people of this country, Council. as far as the deliverables of government. We, is we want to believe the president because he came back and told us that, and again, not to digress, he mm -hmm. told us that that was, you know, the earlier timeline that he gave of about 18 months. It was an overambitious promise, mm -hmm. but this time around, he he can it's assure us that by the end of his tenure, all and he was specific. He said all of them would be commissioned. So we are hoping. If you are saying 65% as at August, we're hoping that by the end of his um, <coughs> tenure, he will be able to commission. But again, did we pay Mota you know, Angels? A, you know, it's a, it's a legacy on. project of the president, and he's committed no, to no that one district hospital. So Mota Angel, <laughs> we paid them some 2.5 million US dollars, and we did not take it back? I'm not aware of the details of what you are telling me, and I'll have to find out and be able to report. I would not like to say something that I am not preview to. Why I'm not preview to the 2.5 million dollars? As far as payments to motor angels are concerned. You are not aware. You are only mentioning, you are not telling me what went into the 2.5 million. Well, this million is a dollars. question that's coming from Manabo so, Governor Sabuja, where so, he's so, saying, and, and let me just quote again, that in any case, why is MPP not explaining why they cancelled the contract between the road ministry and motor angels and why they pay that 2.5 million towards that unwholesome contract? I, I believe we have, a government, we have a government assurance committee of parliament chaired by Honorable Sambuku And these are, these, are, these are works that government has assured us of doing. And certainly, if there have been some payments, Parliament have an oversight responsibility as far as checks and balances of the executive activities and the running of the state is okay. concerned. So certainly they, might, they can trigger that to find out and the minister will come to the floor of parliament to explain to what went that. into it. All if right. indeed and, some and, payments have been made. And, but I cannot confirm on your show that some payment of $2.5 million have been made. Okay. Solomon. Uh, first of all, let me say that uh, you, if you are thinking of the government uh, completed all the agenda 111, then you must be... Uh, you must be living. Must be a joker. A, you must be living in a different part <laughs> because the, the, the manifesto of the MPP tells you that they will continue with Agenda One 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 during uh, Dr. Ba Mahmoud Baumier's. Uh, Which I found. Uh, you know, so clearly, they are telling you that they will not be able to complete. And so we shouldn't believe the president when he talks. Then the president himself. Why must you believe him? At this stage in your state, you don't have to do that. You don't have to. He himself doesn't believe himself. He checked out of of, of the seat last year or so. When he said the next president, he's offloading all the problems to Mr. Alantemate, but we are capable of handling all the, all the nemesis of this administration. Again, you see, the question that uh, Honorable Kwame Abuja asked, he shouldn't end it there. I'm very disappointed. He is a legislator. He should mm. go back to parliament and hold the minister responsible for uh, roads, roads mm -hmm. and highways together with the finance minister and ask him these very questions. Mm. This morning we are talking about 2.5 million dollars. Yeah. Go to the Rena unit. We only needed four million Ghana cities, and it was closed down. So if 2.5 million dollars, the last time we were told Sky Trains two million, two million. Shoo, it went. Yeah. We are going Kualubu, to London. London to Accra six hours. Tw 12 million dollars. A Japan or something. Shoo, 12 million dollars. Last time some small taxes we are collecting one billion. Shoo. These people they don't respect dollars. They don't respect city, and we cannot continue like that. It must cease at a point. $58 million. We passed back here. Doug, shum, the president is going about, going to, what do you call it, Ukraine, going to back someone who is in war. 
Why we, we could do these things here with, with prudence management or prudent management. So it must not end here. He, ha he has to use his legislative powers to hold the minister to parliament and ask him these questions for us to get the necessary answers. And once we are able to get that, then, I mean, uh, 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 why would anybody have any problem? In terms of sustainability of the project, I remember when they were passing the loan or approving the loan, mm. they were clear in their mind that the revenue from our oil is what is going to be used. At least if we cannot pinpoint anything that we have gotten from the oil, I believe it's a wise decision that we can point to the motorway that we used our oil revenue to construct it mm. rather than we misusing it for things that do not help. But, but you are the same person that's saying that even this figure cry is inflated already. No, but the is, figure is inflated. There's no doubt about that. that. We should be happy that it's our oil money. The, is there a guarantee that all that money is going to go into this? But contract? some are going to people's pocket. That one, are you in mm. doubt? No, that's what I'm asking you. That so I have already made that you, point, so there is no need to restate the point. What I'm saying is that uh -huh. I, in spite of the fact that people are going to enjoy from this whole contract, at least as a citizen of this country, what is my benefit? I'll be playing on that road you get my point. So that I will benefit from it. A okay. road that contains about 45,000 uh, tra traffic mm -hmm. daily. Uh, it's, it's a very serious road that you, you don't have to joke with it. So in spite of the chop chop, let them do it with the oil money so that we will benefit from it. Okay. But you see, this business of people stealing from the state, a day of reckoning is coming. Mm. Alan Chamantin will deal expeditiously with anyone Anyone, if someone is in someone because he stole plantain, chicken, hen, seven, ten years, what makes anybody think that you will take out millions of dollars and then go scot free? That assurance I can sit here and offer to the people of this country that the only man who is focused on dealing with corruption head on is Mr. Alan John Koji mm. And that is why nobody must make that mistake not to vote for him. I see. I'll stay on you because I want us to go into our second topic um, very quickly. So a group has also petitioned the Office of the Special Prosecutor to probe some 245 million U.S. dollars that was spent on the All Africa Games. And it, it's very disturbing when you find out that um, $4.5 million of that money was spent on accreditation budgets alone. <laughs> Meanwhile, when you look at the piece of paper that the journalists are showing as accreditation, it's A4 sheets. Yes, we are told $4.5 million was spent, $15 million on feeding. And they are saying that it was for 2,644 athletes, even though we're told in totality that there were some 5,000 athletes and coaches from 55 countries um, that also came in for this show as well. Now we're hearing the minister say some three, over 3 million Ghana cities, well, dollars was paid to GBC for coverage. GBT2 says that they only got only 105,000. So the figures are flying about. <laughs> We spent 60 million to renovate hostels when we could have used that to build new hostels to serve as the village, um, the games village. And then after that, we give it back to the University of Ghana so we can recoup the money. All these things are flying about. We have not gotten any accountability from the ministry. Uh, Bella, let me say, let me first of all thank uh, Kwame Usudanso, who is the convener for the Forum for Accountable Governance. Yesterday, fortunately, I was with him when he submitted the petition to the okay. Office of the Special Prosecutor. Does uh, that mean you are part of the group? That's... Yeah, I'm, I'm part of the group. I oh, mean, I, I, I don't see why this plain TV must be allowed to fester. I was there and supported my brother Kwame Usuda. The, the issues are very simple. Very, very simple. Just recently, Goldfish Ghana mm. constructed the Takwa uh, TMA or TNA mm -hmm. stadium, which is the same capacity, seating capacity, as the University of Ghana sports stadium. The mm. only variation is that he has a Titans track and also they have a rugby pitch okay. and then uh, practicing tracks. You are telling us that this project was started by President Kufo in 2004. At the time you were giving money to finish it off, they were about 80% complete. Mm -hmm. You look straight into our faces as Ghanaians, as Minister of Youth and Sports, and tell us that you used $34 million to finish Renovate, it. Yeah. What? Me neighbor, me neighbor, what is it? Where did we go wrong? You look straight into the 34 million Ghanaians, highly intellectuals, and said, you used 34 million dollars to finish that project. Gain Village, Nelson Kwapon, and then uh, Hila Liman. Mm -hmm. These are hostels already occupied by students. You only place tents there 
did some air condition fixing it, and this man said he expended $16 million. For Christ's sake, what are we doing to ourselves? Even the construction of a modern hostel, how much would it cost you? Mm. $15 million went into food. When Jesus Christ fed the multitude, if these people were, had fed the multitude, I'm sure they would have sold the Bank of Ghana. How much did Jesus Christ use to feed the multitude? You are telling us that you use $15 million to feed 5,000 people. Hey! Somebody must be crazy somewhere. And the Ghanaian is so angry enough. You have to be angry. You know why I'm so angry? Why? When I go back to my village, Ampunya, in the Mansia Central, and I look at how people are struggling there, and I look at how people are dissipating our resources, then I want to go mad. Because, you see, it is not political matter. I cry right now. People are not getting water to drink. Mm -hmm. All the taps are off. I don't know whether you have observed it. Yes, I have. I have. Even I mentioned it this morning. It's monetary the issues. Sending tankers around. I be do things with impunity. Tax, like you said, A4, poor quality. I just made an inquiry uh, with the Paris, uh, the, the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. They are spending close to about 670,000 euro. When you, you, Olympics, the whole world, 670,000 euro, you are telling us tax. For all Africa games, the 5,000 you are quoting, that was the, that was the ultimate number. Mm -hmm. Not all the athletes came. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're saying, so it's for some 2,644. Yes! Tax, 4.5. What I'm hearing is that even internet, they expended $3 million. On internet. Now, you remember when they finished this whole thing, the volunteers, they didn't want to give them yeah. their money. Yeah. A common thousand cities to the volunteers. They had to hold the minister hostage. Before he changes, but he was going to chop that money. Why do we do, do this thing to ourselves? Is it because we need money for campaign or what? Mind you, this minister is very close to the flag of the new patriot. So close, extremely close. What are you insinuating? I'm insinuating that I, my instinct is that some of the monies are found its way into the campaign. Either that, where is the, the vice president getting the money to be doing all this lavish campaign? In this hot economy, where everyone is broke, Look, if you don't know, the middle class has been wiped from the system. Now, we don't have middle class in this country. That is why the poverty is hitting everyone. Because, you see, the middle class serves as a, a layer or a buffer to those downtrodden. Mm. If you have wiped all of them out, who will survive? Few people are enjoying and they are telling us that all is well. And you want me to agree? So, this is a clear cut of state capturing, plundering, and stealing. But I want to calls for a thorough investigation. The OSP must not deal dally with this. Mm. Yesterday, when we went there, we had to sit there for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and they were dealing. I told them, look, we are not going to joke with were this. Were they not aware you were coming? Of, uh, it's a public institution. Even if you are not aware, any time you show up. OK. You must show up early. And it took 40 minutes to see who there. Yeah, someone the came to pick himself? it. No, no, the prosecutor was not around. OK. But we have delivered to them. Mm. And we are going to follow it religiously. So let me thank Kwame Usu down. So, for being bold on this, you see, we must be, we must be citizens, not spectators. Parliament must also take it up. There has to be a commission of inquiry into the activities of the whole all Africa. This was the minister that took us to Cote d'Ivoire, mm. some few minutes away from Ghana. Black stars, Afcon. You know, Afcon they pay for your hotel and those things. Yes. He came back and looked straight into our faces and said, "He spent that three million dollars." You are flying seven hours to Qatar. Qatar, yes, yeah, World Cup. Five million dollars. But you see, it's not surprising because that is a dangerous ministry. It's a crime scene ministry. Between 1993 to 2024, we have had 18 solid ministers occupying that position. Some has lasted, they have lasted not more than four months. Others lasted not more than five months. You remember the, the, the issue of uh, Yusuf Isa Malamisa? Mm -hmm. When he was going to Hartoon with blasters, $46,000, got missing along the way. You remember the issue of Muntaka teaching up pampas. You remember the Brazil where a free agent had to cry on live TV. Young man, he wants to be an MP. Pious Ahidide. You send people to Australia 
under the pretext that they were journalists. The president says that. Don't forget, this morning we are very serious here. No, 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 I'm just. The president I'm, said what? Hold on. <laughs> the president said what? Hold on, allow me to speak. Uh -huh. So when you mention that, uh -huh. I mean, we've always concerns about that report never making it yes. into the public domain. Yes. But the president cleared him, paid that investigation that if we If the president has cleared him at the Jubilee, I have not cleared him here. Look, the truth of the, what, what, was it not true that 60 journalists were brought back from Australia? Yeah. We've so, been asking for that report. So, what public. is there to clear? Sometimes you give some of these things too much credence. Mm -hmm. Is it not a fact that 60 people who were uh, was opposing as journalists were yeah. brought back from Australia to Ghana? And there was a court. Recently, Mumu, Mumu, people who were claiming to be Mumu, and, and they all went to, uh, what, what's the name? Norway. They have absconded. We ask people, their families. I mean, the court died. Yeah. The pathetic nature. Let two family members go and bring their dead body. They go, they shim. They are also gone. <laughs> this is what we are dealing with. Yeah. So this issue, this minister, who does not respect dollar, must re begin to respect dollar together with this government. All right. All that they have done is enough. And the people of this country must not make the mistake of entrusting the destinies of this country to the hands of the new party. Right. party. Well, producers, if you can quickly just check into the Ghana Tonight folder. There are some tweets that Sadiq Adams put up um, concerning how much UPSA is even spending on putting up some four hostels. as against what we spent to refurbish um, the hostels at the University of Ghana. And he says that UPSA is literally constructing an entirely new school campus. That is a 10-floor, multi-purpose, twin-tower edifice and two new story hostel block facilities. A 10-floor, twin-tower with offices, lecture rooms, commercial centers and halls of residential areas and will replace the administrative complex on the old campus. The two student hostels, 10 story each, will accommodate about 3,250 people. The project's ultra-modern nature has been described as unprecedented in the history of the university. All four will cost 230 million CDs. That's 14 million US dollars. And he said he had checked on that um, before he put out this tweet. So there's even a picture of the buildings that are being put up as against what was being refurbished at the University of Ghana. <coughs> and so that's what's going to cost. In fact, those buildings are going to cost 14 million US dollars. New buildings. And yet we spent 16 million US dollars to refurbish the University of Ghana um, you know, hostels. I remember that George Quinn and I believe visited the campus after the All Africa Games to interact with the students. The ACs that were installed in the buildings had been disconnected, so the students could not use it. Some of them said their roofs were leaking. There were even pictures that were able to put out. Their roofs were leaking. There was so much debt. They didn't even have tables on their balconies to cook. So when they went back to school, they were told that they cannot cook in the meantime because all the tables that used to be on the balconies, they couldn't find them anymore. So it was in a more deplorable state per what the students told us as against what we were told had been done. And so, Alikem, if you look at all these things, and we're saying that we spent 245 million US dollars on the All-Africa Games, there's a lot to wonder. Thank you so much, Bella. It's, it's so sad. <clears throat> as a young man, I repeat, I feel so scandalized the path this regime has taken us on. And it is more worrying that you have other young men and women want to, in various ways, defend such kind of loot or broad day thievery. Look, look at the beautiful edifice you're showing of what, can, what, what 200 and... Uh, no, uh, that's uh, the 14 million US dollars can do for UPSA. That's for their UPSA, plan. Yes. yes. And I recall vividly, just a few days after the African Games, there was just some, 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 some showers of rain. And these same buildings, hostels, that was refurbished as such a hoping, is it 16 million? There were leakages all over. The floors were all almost flooded. The rooms, you can't tell. And I knew it. Look, Bella, look out for it. You, the media, should look out. Mm. In some few weeks or months, even those air conditioners will all be removed. Why do you think they have, it's been disconnected? And we must stress it. If it is to even high science, then we must question them. We need to even find out if actually these air conditioners were bought from them or they were just leased to them. Because there were brand new air conditioners that were used for less than a month. <clears throat> so they may give it back to air Hisense or whoever, and then it will find its way in the public again to be sold. Why has it been disconnected? Because somebody is embarking on some criminality again, and they will sit and tell you that these are unprintable words.
You are involved in daily activity. And how do you justify this? And you think, for me as a young person, I should sit and embellish the words and say, this is an adult president who is a septuagenarian. He's in the old age, and therefore I should respect him and not... Come on, you are not gauging my future, and I should sit and keep praising you for doing this? And the president will not do anything about such things because it, it looks like a chunk goes to him. They have some, some format. Whether, what was the format uh, Nyantechi said at the point? In, in I, I met him yesterday. <laughs> He's, you know, the, the, the formats they are using for all these kind of things. And they don't have any shame. And I get so amazed that you have young men who at best should say, look, I have no comment on this. I will not say a word on this. But they want to justify it and say, maybe this or probably that or this or that. Look at the figures we are talking about. GBC is on its own as well. We, we were told 3.6 million. They said it's 105,000. Then a lot of letters were flying here and there. Then you have Gabi want to throw in a job thinking he could salvage the situation. And it's a whole mess. And you think Ghanaians are so gullible that you can be spewing all these things and they will believe what you tell them. I only worry, sincerely, I only worry for the young men who put their lives and their future and credibility on the line for such a government with a very few people who are benefiting and looting the public person. <laughs> However, I take pride and solace in what President Mahama said the last time during the launch of our manifesto, that he's going to embark on what we call the ORAL, Operation Recover or the Loot, because matters of this nature need not to be left just like that. Like I'm, I repeat again, Bella, mm. you need to get your cameraman to keep, or media guys to keep monitoring the hostels. Very soon, they would want to remove those air conditioners and go and sell them. <clears throat> if not, why would you disconnect them? Be because in, in the first place, was there the need for these air conditioners? Why do we make it look like living in Africa must not be in content with our nature? The program was being organized for Africa. People were coming from even the Sahel, where they know themselves the weather is very hot. Then you think that suddenly for two weeks, we must procure air conditioners for them. And now we have procured this brand new air conditioner. Only God knows how much it costs us in itself, because the figures will again be inflated. After just two weeks or three weeks of the program, you've disconnected them. Then you will now come back and tell us that this is how much you spent. And, all, and, and where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? And these monies could be used to do a lot of things. You talked about the Agenda 111. And my brother is saying here that they have 65, averagely, 65% is near 65% is, is near completion. <laughs> is it only the infrastructure? Or they have even procured equipment to fit them? It is, even infrastructure hasn't reached 65%, with the greatest of respect. Fortunately, fortunately, per, per, per the nature of my job, I crisscross this country. If you are even heading to Likwe, to Huawei area, go and see what is left in the bush there. Even when going to Hoda, go and see what is left in the bush there. When heading to Takra, even in the Volta, which, which project has reached? Look, one of the contractors told me that, look, they cannot even finish five before they leave office. And no, it's not surprising that they have decided to offload all the burden to one of their oh, appendages. We had the presidential advisor say that they had a number of them that should start, they should start commissioning. Don't believe any of those things. Of these this, are, these yeah. are broad day pathological liars who do not care who they are speaking to. They feel when their backs are against the wall, they should just say anything to relieve themselves. And that is what is continually happening. It is why it is of worry to me that you have young persons, and I'm not saying this without, with, I'm not being personal, but I'm sharing this with so much sentiment that why my brother will also be here and want to put his life on the line on defending matters of this nature. There's a deliberate loot you are not part of. There's a deliberate loot you are not partaking in. There's a deliberate criminality you are not involved in. And you sit to want to defend the very apostles who are sitting behind just at the stroke of a pen. They are doing all these things, and you okay. want to stand in that state for them. All right. L let me let um, counsel come in so he can respond to this. And I'm saying this on authority because, again, we visited the campus. One of our correspondents was at the University of Ghana campus, and he put out a story. In fact, it's Christian Yali. Um, pardon me, where he put up pictures of the state of these hostels. And he said that students were um, lamenting the challenges in their rooms after 16 million US dollars were said to have been spent on renovating. So um, he says that, so let me just read a bit. The halls come with a unique layout named after notable personalities, etc., etc. Then he says government awarded a controversial $16 million contract to refurbish this hall. But barely two months after the game, Parts of the halls leak at the slightest drizzle of rain. The installed air conditioners have been disconnected, so students cannot use them. When we saw the renovation, and that's a student quoting it, we thought by the time we come back, life in the diaspora halls would be very good. But then, when we came, we saw otherwise. Currently, most of the rooms lack tables and chairs. 
A notice from management has prohibited students from cooking at the balconies due to the unavailability of tables. In the face of this, I visited some kitchens, but was surprised to see some did not even have light. The sinks were rusty with the valves disconnected. We were not allowed, and please if you can put that link up so that we can see the pictures as I'm reading. We were not allowed to cook in our balconies. This is a student and I'm quoting. In the first case, we don't even have tables to put our hot plates <coughs> on. We are forced to do a lot of things that lead to discomfort. Quote again, the kitchen is not conducive for cooking. It is not in a good shape because looking at the number and looking at the size of the kitchen, I don't think this is good for us. That's another student. Amid the water crisis, students are also battling with reading rooms that are filled with dirt and broken louver blades. Again, I quote, it's not encouraging for our studies. We have made complaints, but it seems we are not being heard. As of now, we've resumed school and it seems no one cares about what is going on. Our water crisis is also a big challenge. You wake up in the morning and want to bath, but the tap wouldn't flow. You are then forced to walk downstairs um, to fetch water. So that's what, <coughs> that's the reports that we're able to get from students at the University of Ghana. In fact, at these three halls, that's where renovated. So Elizabeth Say Hall is one of them. Um, we also have Jean Nelson and we have Dr. Hilary Mann and Professor Alexander Kwapon. Those are the four halls that were renovated. Yeah, thank you, Bella. And let me congratulate uh, the forum for is it governance and accountability. Yeah, uh, accountable, governance. accountable governance. Led by my own uh, brother, Kwame Usudansu. Lawyer Kwame. He's here as you are the lawyer. Lawyer Kwame Usudansu. <laughs> lawyer. But there is a demonstration coming up in connection with that. With what? The yeah, all yeah. Africa games? Yeah, yeah. There's so a... after a petition, people are going on the streets yeah, as well. That is what okay, all right. You let me let. Let's, sorry, so, Coco, please, let's give him some reason, time so he can also The respond. reason I am commending uh, the group led by Kwame, uh, lawyer Kwame Usu so is that, one, we had some of these matters in 2008, 2007, 2008. Can 2008, when Ghana hosted the, the uh, is it, can, can 2008, Eight. the African game, is it, no, the AFCON. Mm. It was an election year. We had all manner of things. We have heard in the past the, uh, the Prudential uh, Bank scandal, that the money that, uh, that were being stashed at Prudential Bank <coughs> were even, uh, was more than the monies at the, um, how do you call it, uh, in, in, the, in, in the stock of Bank of Ghana mm. and those things, stashed by the then officials of President Kufu's government and a whole lot of stuff. Fast forward, when the MPP lost power in 2009, mm -hmm. it handed over to the NDC in 2009, January, how many of these appointees were incarcerated, were put before court and incarcerated for wrongdoing and the likes? So it's just a matter of just churning out falsehood, smearing people and causing <clears throat> injury to their reputation. I am happy that anything accountability or social accountability, I am for it. Okay. That at the end of the day, if anyone has conducted or misconducted himself or herself, to be held before the law and prosecuted fervently in the name of the republic so mm. that it will serve as deterrence for others to also look at it. Not necessarily destroying the reputation of others. Bella, you see, I'm happy that they are taking this matter to the OSP. Mm. And I will urge lawyer Kisye Jabin to expedite action in the investigation of this matter. Because it has been lingering on our necks for so long a time now, since the inception of the African Games, mm -hmm. uh, these allegations started coming up from a whole lot of courtesies, demonstrations from volunteers, and a whole lot of things started coming in. So if there has been a formal petition, the OSPV no, did not need a petition to be issued before triggering investigation into matters of public concern of this nature. Mm. But once it, he has been petitioned, or the office has been petitioned to investigate these matters, I believe that in the interest of public accountability and in the interest of the integrity and sanctity of the profession, the people involved, their reputation, mm. He must expedite action in investigating the matters and bringing to the attention of the people of this country the outcome of the investigations. And whoever is culpable, as far as any wrongdoing is concerned, hold before the laws of our country and prosecuted for that purpose. Okay. Bella, you remember recently the minister was before the Public Accounts Committee and made some admissions to the Public Accounts Committee that um, they made some payments in excess of $3 million yeah. to Ghana Broadcasting Corporation as far as the media rights or the TV rights or the broadcasting mm -hmm. rights were concerned. And it became a hula balloon that the, the, the director general of GBC, Professor is it Ahmed, <coughs> Ahmed something, Amin, Amin, Amin Alassan, came out to state that what GBC received in their books were just a little over 105,000 US mm -hmm. dollars and not 3.6 mm -hmm. million dollars, as was put out by the minister before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. Yeah. 
it became a hula balloon, a banter that people were saying, hey, broad day Tivri, see, uh, an appointee of the government, he dissociated himself from the Tivri, and others were saying, no, they have turned these monies into campaign, and mm. what, 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 and a whole lot of things, mm. that the man is a saint, and blah, 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 blah. And, and just before you continue, so the pictures you're seeing on your screen right now, these pictures were taken two months, or barely two months after the All-Africa Games, and we're told that 60 million was used to renovate these halls. So that's what we are seeing on our screen now. This was the state of the halls by the time the students went back to school. Please uh, carry so, on. So, I've given you more so, videos. So, <laughs> so when, when the issue of the GBC, the Ministry of Youth and Sports matter came in, there were <coughs> subsequently some memos that came that popped up, which clearly established that what the Director General sought to put out was, was, was taken aback mm. because clearly it is true that GBC received 105, uh, 105 thousand US dollars as he clearly stated because mm. what you have received in your books is what you have received that you must account because it reflects in your book and for accounting purposes that is what they receive but it is not only GBC that did the work and GBC did same in collaboration with other media outlets and from the memos sent on 20 uh the memos sent March 26 2024 from GBC the director general himself instructing or directing the ministry to make some forward payments because of some uh, some mm -hmm. collaborations that they had, some subcontractors that they worked with together. So in totality, that that amounted to the three point six million dollars, of which there is no the, it establishes no wrongdoing as far as what the minister sought to put out was concerned. I believe that the only thin line was what GBC received mm. and what went into other service providers together in the broadcasting rights of the African Games. <clears throat> but for these memos, some wrongdoings or some. Uh, malicious intent would have been meted out to the, the, the Honorable Minister for Youth and Sports and his integrity uh, would have been damaged. But, but it injured. still needs to be investigated because, I mean, I'm, we cannot just dwell on no, that. I'm coming, I'm coming on that. On, on we need to of find that. out who are the faces or the people behind these other companies I'm, I'm that coming. were also I'm coming. given I'm coming. the subcontract. On the back of that. We, we have to go, no, On the back of that. That's why I'm supporting the investigation that has been triggered by the, the, the group for the OSP <clears throat> to go into this matter. Okay. Because probably okay. they have ample justifications with documentary right. evidence to be able to show how the expenditures went. And okay. Bella, we have for, to land. for government Sorry. works, projects, every contractor that conducts renovations or okay. contractual purposes has a defect liability period inherent in their contract. Thank you. Enshrined in their contract. Thank you. So if the contract has a defect liability period, has the defect liability period uh, uh, been extinguished? Has it, well, well, we hope that I all the investigations... Have, and those kind of things. Well, let, so let's investigations wait. Will be able to Thank you. This matters Thank you. For the I'm, I'm being counted down, unfortunately. We've gone way beyond the time, please, gentlemen. The public, please. The so, so, also... Let, let me just read a few messages. Uh, so, yeah, Neodic says, because, we can't uh, wait for the demonstration. Uh, the Peace Council should lead us. Okay. Um, always doing comparisons. That's Gilbert Amwakun Atta. And then, also... Um, Another thirty million dollar interest on the hundred and eleven million dollars. Well, we have to go, unfortunately. But thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, I cannot let you speak. Please okay. forgive me. Uh, but I've been speaking to Solomon Owusu. He's a senior communicator for Movements for Change. Elikem Kotoko, pardon me, is the deputy national organizer for the NDC. And Enoch Afuakwa Esquire is a member of the NPP national communications team step into the world of dewa 539 for your chance to win big with dewa direct and dewa chop money now with dewa direct dial star 446 hash pick 1 to 39 and win 20 times 40 times or 400 times your stake and win cash every evening at 7 p.m and on sundays at 6 p.m early birds love dewa chop money at 10 a.m dial star 446 hash choose 1 to 39 and win 20 times 40 times or 400 times your stake Play at dewa-nla.com or dial star 446 hash. If you need help, call 055-6259-249 or 053-2427-9879. Dewa Afa. Remember to play cash out as well. Star 439 hash. Select option two. And Roland Walker is coming here with Community Manifesto as well from La Baoleshi Chief's Palace in East Legon. Ayawa Suez Wagon Constituency. We'll be back.